Hey guys, you're watching Jay's Two Cents. And as I've been promising for the last couple of weeks, I'm gonna show you guys just how easy it is to build your own computer and there's nothing to be scared of because these aren't my parts. So if anything breaks, it's not my problem. So let's go ahead and jump right in and build this thing. All right guys, so let's go ahead and talk about the parts. Got a whole stack of parts here. Everything was bought fresh, nothing was reused. For the graphics card, we went with the Asus Direct CU2 uh, GTX 660. This is not the TI version, guys. This is the standard 660. This was the best graphics card we could afford for this budget, but it had all the features we were looking for. Nice heat pipe design, very quiet operation. For the motherboard, we again went with the basic Gigabyte B75M D3H. Very solid motherboard. It's gonna be a computer that's on all the time, so it's got uh, very stable operation in it, so that's what we needed. We also needed a micro ATX board to make more room in the case, so we didn't go with a full featured, uh, full-size board. And I'll tell you, in the end, this is a very impressive motherboard. Processor, straightforward, i5-3570K. We got this thing at a very reasonable price at Micro Center. And for the memory, we're using ballistics, uh, eight gigabytes of 1600 megahertz RAM. We didn't go all out on the power supply unit. We went with a Thermaltake TR2 600 watt. It is an 80 plus rated PSU, so it's gonna get the job done for us. And for the case, we're using a Diablo Tech Evo ATX mid-tower case. Nothing special, had all the features we needed, and it was all powder coated black, including the inside. One of the things you should always do when you build a PC is use a ground strap. I don't use a ground strap, I never have. I built at least 20 computers in just the last few years alone. Never used a ground strap and I've never had a problem, but manufacturers will tell you it is recommended to use a ground strap. What you wanna do is remove your motherboard and place it on top of your motherboard box. This gives you a nice surface to work on. It won't scratch your table because of all of these solder points right here, which are very sharp. You want to install the CPU when the motherboard is free of the case. When you try and install it inside, you have a lot less room to work with. And the processor is the most fragile part of the build, so you wanna make sure that uh, that is protected at all times. One of the most common mistakes people make when installing their CPU into their motherboard is they don't orient the CPU uh, properly. You'll notice up here that there is two notches on the top of the processor. Those notches correspond with two notches that are in the socket. So you wanna make sure that you get those lined up and that you drop the CPU on there evenly and it will fit right into place. It seems simple enough, but you'd be surprised how many people have actually destroyed their sockets by not properly installing them. This is also another part that a lot of people are afraid to do is to properly lock down their socket. When you bring down the latch cover here, it goes under the screw, but when you push down the lever and you get about halfway, it starts to get really, really tight. You actually are gonna feel this rod bend and it's gonna make you think you're hurting your processor, but you're not. You're making sure it has a nice secure set, uh, seal and contact between all of the different pins underneath the process. So for this build, right off the bat, we're not really planning on doing any real overclocking. So we've opted to use just the stock Intel heatsink fan. Over time, we will replace this. Uh, so we're just gonna go ahead and leave the stock thermal compound that is on the heatsink right here. Uh, but what you need to make sure is that you orient the fan in a spot of which you're gonna be able to easily plug into uh, the fan header, which in this case is to the bottom and to the left of the process. But you want to make sure that when you seat this, you get the nipples. <laughs> Computers like dirty talk. You want to make sure you get all four of these nipples lined up on the holes. We're going to push this down. You heard it lock, push it to the right, and it's locked in. Now, instead of going around in a circle, you want to do this in a star pattern. So you're going to go directly across, push One thing it down. I want to go ahead and talk about before we install the memory onto this motherboard is the importance of checking the channel configuration of your motherboard. These are not all the same. One would think that the two blue channels and the two white channels would be separate, but that's not true for all motherboards. So make sure you take out the manual and don't toss it aside until after you've looked at this and determined what your memory configuration is. And speaking of which, it's a good thing I checked the manual because this is one of those motherboards where to get a dual channel configuration, you have to use the same color if you're using two dim slots. For the case, we just went for a very basic, very simple 
uh, Diablo Tech mid tower case. You want to look for something that has intake fans on the front, on the top. Uh, this one just happens to have a couple on the side. But what I liked about this particular case is the fact that it has, it's all black powder coating. Different motherboards have different uh, hole patterns for mounting locations. You have micro ATX, ATX. And so what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna, most cases have these holes marked. Unfortunately, this case doesn't. So what you're gonna have to do is you're gonna have to hold the motherboard uh, up to the holes just so you can get an idea of which pattern of, of uh, mounting screws you're gonna need to use. And then what you do after that is you're going to put in your standoffs for your motherboard. Before installing your motherboard inside the case, you want to make sure you get the I.O. plate oriented properly. There's nothing more annoying than getting this thing in the case upside down and then it doesn't match up with your motherboard when you're trying to install it. And so when installing your power supply, it's important to think about where your computer is going to be installed. If it's going to be sitting on a desk, like over there, go ahead and show the mess in this office. There's no carpet to worry about for my power supply, so I'm able to keep the fan pointing down, which will keep the dust from getting inside the power supply unit. However, this model over here is going to be installed on the floor sitting on carpet. So if we have carpet plugging up this hole, it's not going to keep very much air from, it's going to keep air from getting to this power supply unit if it's faced downward. So we're going to go ahead and mount this model facing up so that it can get fresh air from inside the case. Next thing we're going to do now that we have our motherboard installed, our power supply is mounted, we've got our 8 pin to our CPU ran. A little bit, I don't like this, but this case doesn't really allow us to run it behind. We're now going to install our GPU, and this is the Asus uh, DC2 or the DCU uh, GTX 660 from NVIDIA. So we're getting pretty close to having all the guts installed here. We've got the power supply unit. We've got it routed to the back, zip tied. We've got our graphics card, our motherboard, memory, processor, heat sink, and the added fans. Okay guys, so here it is. It's all put together. The wires are, you know, some people might say this looks all right. I'm anal retentive and this bothers me a little bit, but we did the best we could with the cable management in this case. Again, this case was only 37 bucks, so you really can't complain. It's powder coated black. It looks pretty good. Um, we can get the wires up out of the way a little bit there, but the back side, it's really not too bad. I just kind of stuck the excess over here under the drive base. You won't really see it. Uh, but what you gotta be sure of is that you don't have these bunched up in a particular spot to where you can't get the side panel back on. And you can see they stick out a little bit, 
but when you push it on it with your hand, you can see that there's some slack, so they will compress and close. But before we stick the back panel on, we have to make sure that this thing actually works. So what we're gonna do next is we're gonna go ahead, get the monitor, keyboard, and mouse hooked up to this thing, and we're gonna do our first test to see whether or not I broke it, or we built ourselves a budget gaming machine. And if, it, if I broke it, you signed a waiver, so. Okay, so moment of truth, it's put together. It looks pretty cool. We're gonna hit that power button and see if it actually boots. Oh, we got a beep. Look at that. We got a post. Yay, Jay's Two Cents did the amazing plugging in of parts. You guys see how easy it is to build a computer? Literally, building a computer these days is nothing but putting together Legos. The most important part you have to remember is be gentle with some of it. I've seen some of you guys like practically shoehorn in some of these YouTube videos computer parts into a computer. I understand you're excited. I understand it's your computer and you want to see, oh, I want to play, I want to play all my games, I want to watch porn tonight. But you got to just be patient. This stuff is fragile. And you can take some extra time like I did and make sure you put together, uh, you know, the wiring in a nice, neat manner. But check it out. These white LEDs here look really nice. There is an awful lot of air blowing out of this. It's kind of a noisy computer, but the guy who uh, built this computer for it doesn't care about the noise. And it's just going to make sure everything stays nice and cool. So now we're going to go ahead and get the operating so operating system loaded on this. And we're going to put on some benchmarks. We're going to go ahead and just see exactly how this thing benchmarks. Don't go anywhere. That was really gay. What's up guys, it's Jay Shusens. Um, just wanted to do a quick overview of the computer and the parts that I built for my friend. Uh, we spared no expense on this computer at all. This, I mean, went with, with the, the iNtel uh, processor right here. It's like the 39,000K or something like that. Um, for the, the, the motherboard, it was important that we had something that could handle all this power. So we went ahead and we went with the, um, the Gigabyte, um, what is that? The GAB75M, a bunch of numbers, it doesn't really matter. Um, we went with some of the um, ballistics. The ballistics, they spelled that wrong. It doesn't have an, ballistics doesn't have an X. This is probably one of the like messed up versions, so it has an X on it, whatever. And this, this bad boy right here, this is our GTX 660. 60. GTX 660. It's hard to say. And it, it has a header on it. And this header feeds into a turbo, and this is the intercooler in there, and it's got two fans on the bottom right there, which is really important because when you have the top of the line, like this right here, you have to properly cool this. So that's why we got these fans, these LEDs. LEDs add like 100 megahertz to the speed of your computer. I think I spit on the lens there, you might want to wipe that off. So, um, this right here, this right here is like a flux capacitor coil. This, this is actually very high tech. This, this isn't released on the market. This is proprietary design simply for this computer. And I, I can't really talk too much about that. NASA told me, you know, listen, we'll, we'll let you use some of this technology, but I said too much. Uh, but anyway, that uh, I thought maybe you guys want a little bit of information about this computer. So, you know. It only costs like $4,800, which wasn't too bad. And so, uh, oh, and on the front, this is like our, this is like our intake right here. Um, this is JDM. This came straight off of Honda. And uh, this computer is so badass that we actually needed uh, automotive parts to cool it. So, there you go. Hope you guys enjoyed. This is uh, Jay's Two Cents Christian Bill.